uh, starting off about our about us and our conduct and attitude. Uh, at the end of the day, we're all here to play a game, um, but the game we've chosen is a military simulation, and we expect you to treat operations a little bit as that. So as soon as that briefing starts, that's when you bring your A game and pay attention. Um, you have to follow your leader's directions uh, without bitch. Uh, command structure. So anybody can slot in as a team or the squad leader if they want to. Um, and we, you may get asked if we're short people. Once you're on the up, the command structure is pretty simple. You've got perch or high command who issues orders to all units, um, and will generally conduct the briefing and stay at base. Uh, I'm going to say this. What I'm going to go over here is for infantry, but it's pretty much the same for whatever we play. Um, Squad leads, they're the guys who are in charge on the ground. They control up to three fire teams, uh, which is a squad. Their responsibility is completing the objective set out by high command and telling the fire teams where to go. The next one down is the fire team lead. He's in charge of his three guys, or three to five guys. The fire team lead is the one that chooses formations and positions his guys according to what the squad lead needs. Uh, we'll just say a little note on that, the squad lead isn't micromanaging the team so he should be able to tell the fire team lead to assault here and then the fire team lead just gets on with it. Uh, the fire team lead can always ask for more clarification and information. Uh, command structure is all about comms so fire team leaders you need to be hot on these radios getting your guys sorted and passing on info to your squad lead so he has a tactical view that keeps getting constantly updated. Equally your squad lead um, you need to be on your fire team lead to keep them moving and get support to them when they call and need for it. Um, and we'll go over some simple stuff that makes comms a lot easier in a bit. So the key setup, um, default ace interact is left windows key, self interact is control left windows key, medical menu by pressing H. Uh, you can rebind all of those. Uh, caps locks for talking on short range radio, control caps lock is long range, control P opens up your radio. Um, the, um, B... Is the board meant to be moving? Is the board the, moving? No, the presentation, is it meant to be as in switch no. and slide? No. Oh, okay, I'll just make sure. Um, be a bit funny about changing your caps lock and things, because Task Force tends to not like that for some reason. Uh, for loadouts, we don't generally restrict loadouts unless there's a gameplay reason that we want to use. A good rule of thumb is to only use stuff on whatever side you're using. Picking up enemy weapons has to be okay through the chain of command. Um, it, it can cause a lot of confusion. Uh, good, another thing, if, if we really want to restrict something, we'll just take it out of the arsenal so you can't use it anyway. Uh, we'll go over some basic skills. Uh, map reading and navigation, if everyone wants to open up their maps, pressing M. So you've got along your bottom are your Eastings and you've got the little numbers there, 060 uh, and then your Northings are the ones along the, the left hand side going bottom to top. You can call out a nice six, six figure grid reference by reading along your Eastings. Uh, so go to 060 along the bottom and then 049 on the left and that's your six figure grid reference, that dot there. 8 figure grid, for ed, for grid reference you can estimate um, so that dot that I've put is about 0604 uh, uh, map markers you can place down double clicking uh, you've got some drop down things uh, you can change your colour etc uh, they're really good for uh, calling out contacts, um, putting down checkpoints and stuff. We'll go over again. Eh. Map markers, we were saying, um, the only one who should be putting down the map markers is the fire team lead or the squad lead for their team. So the squad lead puts down the map markers for the, his fire teams, the fire team lead puts down map markers for his team. Unless it's contacts, put down contacts if you can put down contacts. But for everything else, seat checkpoints, waypoints, attack markers, base of fires, all that, Leave it up to your team leads. You can make suggestions to them, but don't put it on yourself. Because then it just gets confusing. We don't know whose orders we're following. All right, so one thing we don't do enough is utilize map markers uh, to their fullest. What we want is common points of reference for one. So you can mark houses uh, with numbers, colors, etc. 
Um, say if you're claiming a town, it's a lot easier to split that town into a load of houses with uh, numbers so everybody knows where they're going to. Again, that's where we come onto that com issue. It's a lot easier to say going to house one than it is to that blue house over there. Uh, it's this common point of reference. Uh, objectives you get marked. We generally use Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, etc. for objectives, or little words about them like enemy base and shit like that. Uh, other things we use checkpoints, which will be CP one, two, three, so on. Yeah, those are to mark a route. Don't put a big fucking line on the map and say go follow that line. Uh, then if you get separated, you can regroup at a checkpoint rather than a big line. Uh, you can use colours to separate teams, so have Raven 1 as blue checkpoints, Raven 2 as red checkpoints, etc. Radio usage, this is always a fun one. Uh, so quickly we're going to run through short and long range radios. You press Control p to pull up your radio. So if everyone does that, you should have an ANC 152, which is blue 4 radio. You've got your current channel there, which you can switch through using the, the pre button. And you can just put into your current frequency what frequency you're using. Generally, Raven 1 uses 69.1. What do Raven 2 use? 52.3. Okay, that's useful. Um, another one, uh, command channel will be 50.1. So if you at the bottom there you've got two little arrows set additional channel so if you go to channel 2 put it on 50.1 see if I can actually do it uh, and then set frequency uh, you can set that as your additional channel and press T to talk over that so you can hear two channels at once uh, pressing control on the left arrow key will put it to only come in your left ear. Control on the right arrow key puts it only in your right ear, so you can have different channels on different ears. Uh, main uses of radios are for important information. Uh, so this is where that conduct and attitude comes in. Keep it to important shit over the radios. Um, contacts, orders, asking questions about orders, calling for medical, status checks are all important. Ask Mercy, asking Mercy if he's had a nice day is not that important because Mercy's not important. <laughs> In the teams, everyone has a call sign, so there'll be Raven One, Raven One. So out Raven One, you'll have one, two, three, four, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. Same with Raven 2, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, use those over the radios. When you want to talk to somebody, start with their call sign and then your call sign so everyone knows who's talking to who. You don't have to keep at the saying their call sign if you're having a conversation. You can just continue with the conversation. Uh, one of the great good things about having the numbered thing is it makes status checks a lot easier. So some your team lead can call over the radio status check and you just go in order of numbers which includes medical info, ammunition info, and then any additional info. So if I ask Mershi for a status check. Mershi is AFK. Mott, can I have a status check? Mentally I'm pretty unstable, but uh, you know, ammo and haven't been shot, all good. Okay. Correct response is green on medical, green on ammo. Currently sitting listening to this briefing. Contact calling, so we've gone over this many times and I think we're really good at it. So if you want to call out a contact that you see, you call out. Con think of all this before you say it because otherwise it tends to come out as a little bit gibberish. Um, call out contact on the radio with an estimation of the size of the enemy contact, so a fire team, which is like four to five, six dudes, uh, a squad, which is two to three fire teams. Uh, you can also say like six guys, BTR, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the more specific you can get, the better. Then give them a direction. Uh, ideally, you want to be giving them a compass direction. So you press K to pull up your compass and then spin around, or you can have it in your GPS. So. Uh, Aaron here is at my 255. Uh, you can give a cardinal direction if it's quick, so I could also say Aaron's to my west. 
Uh, then you want, after you've given an estimate, after that you want to give an estimation of distance, so Aaron's 10 meters, and then you want to give some extra info to help him walk onto the target. He's to the right of Mott in front of that green tower. If you've got time, you can mark them on the map as well and keep it updated. Uh, use EI for enemy infantry, uh, fire team for fire team, so EI fire team, FT. Uh, or you do a short direct description such as tank, BTR, blah blah blah. Hey, best bit now is medical. But. Are we having a crash course on medical? Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, well, we... Medical. Will, uh, Will, you're normally the medic. Get teaching. Well, so, you go up to him, and then you look at him, and you, you press H. And then that'll bring up the medical menu for Terrace. And then you're going to see his head is red, because Mutt shot him in the head. So you click on the head, you select a bandage type, and normally for the advanced that we use elastic is the best. So you click elastic and it'll start bandaging up his head. You're going to want to do this until it's no longer red. And then when every part of him is white on the medical menu, that'll mean he's not bleeding anymore. Hey, I'm healed. Hello? <laughs> okay, so yeah, thanks for that guys. Um... Aaron, stay still. I'm not going to shoot you. I just want to show the medical menu. So when you press H on somebody, it brings up this medical menu. You can select the different limbs. Um, for advanced, because there's two ACE systems, there's advanced and basic. For advanced, you're going to need bandages. As a rifleman, you'll need bandages and morphine. A medic needs a pack as well, which is a personal aid kit. Uh, to heal yourself, you open up the medical menu, you click on the limb that's red and bandage them. It comes up on the right hand side what's wrong with them. So no injuries on Aaron, many injuries on me. Uh, so the only thing that's different for the medics in advanced is you've got this personal aid kit which you can use to get somebody back from unconsciousness. Um, in basic, you use epinephrine instead. It's just a quick injection. Um, for the personal aid kit and advanced, they've got to be stable, so you've got to bandage everything. Whereas in basic, you can just hit them with the epi, even if they're slightly wounded. Just keep in mind that, that if they've lost a lot of blood, then they'll probably fall back unconscious. So you've got to put some blood into them. There's loads of tutorials for Ace Medical. I'll let you guys work that out by yourselves. But the basics are: click H, give them bandage everything, give morphine if you're in pain. Uh, movement. All right. So nobody seems to be able to move properly. So you've got a few different modes. You've got a walk. You've got a jog. You've got a combat jog, which is with your gun up. And then you got a sprint, running around like a madman. So to switch between walk and everything else, I think it's Control C by default. And that gives you your walk. Uh, if you're running it's with your like combat jogs, uh, double click C. Normal ones, double click C again. Sprints, hold shift. Uh, you've also got a couple of modifiers, so you've got gun up, like I've got here, and gun down by double tapping control. So you can jog with gun down, which is a different speed to jogging with gun up. The same as combat jog with gun up is different to combat jog with gun down. So all different speeds, keep that in mind. Fighting leaders, that's a good way of setting the speed so that not everybody's running in front of each other. Jog with your gun down, double tap C to regain stamina. So yeah, so um, it, you regain stamina quicker jogging with your gun down. This is the teamwork section, I've called it. So nice and oh boy, probably gonna fall backwards. And Here like, we go. To catch us. <laughs> Team verdict. <for> <laughs> I hate to say it, but if you guys expect me to do a trust fall, I'm gonna go grab a coffee. <laughs> okay. So we got. We'll start off with the fire teams and body teams, as well as security. 
Right. So fire team that's made up of four to six people is led by the fire team leader and his two IC. We use, the numbering system we use a fire team leader is always number one, his two IC is always number two, and then etc. The fire team is the smallest building block that we use, so they're never really split up doing different objectives. You should all be together as a fire team. You shouldn't be too spread out. Um, saying that we. I do like to say that each team is made up of buddy teams, which is just two people who watch each other's back, make sure that they don't get killed, etc. So if you're in a buddy team with somebody, you stick with them by their back. So for an example, an automatic rifleman, his ammo bearer will be his buddy. You can just split up in a fire team and say, alright, you be my buddy. Um, good for clearing houses and stuff as well. Uh, the fire team leader can then assign each buddy team a colour. Uh, and then he can just say red team go over there, blue team go over here, rather than being like 2-1, two, 2-2, two, two, you need to do this, 2-3, two, 2-4, two, you do that. The uh, imp most important thing about the fire team is the concept of security. Because you're a small unit, you know, only four to six guys, it you can be quite easy to ambush, and security is basically making sure that you're aware of your surroundings all around you, so you can't get snuck up on so easily. And if you do get snuck up on, you can easily identify it and destroy whatever's sneaking up on you. Uh, so, I've got a big example here. Uh, say you've been sent up a hill to recon a town. The only person that really needs to be looking down in that town is the fire team leader or somebody who's nominated. The only one of you doing that. The other three need to be getting security on the flanks. Um, and you should be nominating yourselves, you should be saying I'm looking south, I'm looking north, whatever. Uh, so either you'll spot something useful for recon that's part of your mission anyway, or you'll um, save you all your team by spotting a patrol that's sneaking up on you. Uh, you can use the alt key and then look around to free look while you're moving, so you can still look, go forward while looking around. Uh, okay, we'll go through the basic formations, which is where my wonderful PowerPoint comes in. Starting off with a wedge. I spent ages on these, so be impressed. The wedge is really good for frontal attacks. So what you've got here is you've got a lot of forward firepower, but you've also got a little bit of protection to the flanks. If, you, if it looks black to you, you can come up nice and close and have a look like these guys. You can hold where click to zoom in. And it, or uh, zoom in on it and it should come up. Um, the little arrows I've got, this is where you should be looking when you're stopped. Generally, you'll be looking forward if you're moving forward. Um, but use that alt key to look around to your sectors where you've got. Um, so yeah, when you're stopped, that's the way you're looking. You see you've got 360 here. You've got the guy at the front looking front. Guy at the right, looking right, guy at the left, da, da, blah blah blah. Um, whoever's in Jake's team, do you want to form a wedge? For me? Well, there's only two of us, so. Yeah, it's me and him. We'll steal <laughs> two more. Um, just just four guys one. nominate themselves, <laughs> go on. Form a nice wedge. Alright, I'll be point, form wedge on me. So there you go. That is an alright wedge. That's quite a tight wedge, so you can always spread it out more if you to cover bigger areas. Okay guys, do you want to form a line looking towards us? Shouldn't be this hard. Mercy on swap with me. Because I don't want to put the medic on the end now, do we? Alright, lines generally what you'd be using um, if you're assaulting somewhere. You've got all that forward firepower, but obviously not so much on your flanks. You can form a column now. So yeah, columns, low profile, that's stealth basically. You've not got a lot of forward firepower, but if you look, you've not got a very big profile either. You're not really spread out. 
the little arrows show you again your sectors of control that's where you should be looking and keeping an eye on the rear guys got the rear uh, left and right for the middle guys staggered column this one always takes a bit of work <coughs> oh no it doesn't they're on it like a car bonnet right we use this mostly when going down roads but you can use it at any time it has the low profile of the column but with a bit more forward firepower and you've also got better firepower to your flanks because you can still shoot sideways because you're offset from each other so Mercy's a little behind Jake and then Titan's behind him and then uh, so awesome. Willem's behind Jake the then Titan and then Mercy trailing at the back yes Titan is the final one is a diamond Good for me, I don't have to move. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was staying at the yeah. back. Diamond, that's really good for providing security to say a wounded guy in the middle or just general 360. So like I said, if you're if you're reconning that town, Jake's down there looking down on the town, the rest of the guys have got his back looking around. Yeah, but important thing about space in there, though these guys are quite good. But you don't want to be all bunched up, so you can spread these formations out as wide as you like. Um, if you, we've all got that shack deck thing, so you see there's like three circles. You don't want to have guys in that middle circle, really. You want them to be a bit further than that, either outside the middle circle or on the edges of it. Because if you're all together, you can all get blown up. <laughs> ROE will be set by the squad lead which is balls of engagement so either you'll be fire first or hold fire until firing back PID you gotta make sure that you know what you're shooting at don't shoot civilians don't shoot your own side that should be common sense alright specialist position so the AR auto rifleman is the guy who's gonna be fighting all that suppression Sarge over there is rocking his AR high rate of fire and lots of bullets. He'll probably need somebody who's his ammo bearer. So that body team I was like I was on about. Uh, whatever LMG you've got, or MG indeed, um, either light machine gun or machine gun, it's the same deal. You want to do short bursts of fire onto enemy positions to keep their heads down. Doesn't need to be super accurate. It's his job just to get the superior fire down and keep their heads down so you can manoeuvre. The medic is the one you'll be calling when people are downed. Uh, we've already gone through the medical system so no need to go do that again. Um, the medic's the one with that pack so he is God basically. Uh, he's the only one that can heal somebody with broken legs or that are unconscious. It's a little different in the basic system because you just bandage your legs and then boom you're done. You don't won't get broken legs. Uh, if you're a medic, you have to stay safe, so no running out under heavy fire. You need smoke and and cover are your two friends. Uh, you can pull patients back to hard cover and deal with them there. And then you want to bandage them fully, check their pulse. If they've got a pulse, then get to the pack and they'll be fine. Sometimes if they have no pulse, you'll need to pull somebody else to give CPR on them. Uh, we've got the time on ours is quite long so I doubt you need to use CPR unless they've been out there for more than 5-10 five, five, minutes I think it is set at about 10 minutes so if they've been out more, there for more than 8 minutes then you might pull, want to pull somebody to do CPR that just basically resets that timer so they won't die halfway through the pack uh, the medic's the one in charge of the patient so leave it to him to decide unless you know uh, unless there's fire incoming so if you're a rifleman and some guy says to you, I need your help um, with CPR, unless you're under contact, then you've got to go help with the CPR. You do that through the ACE interaction with the medical menu. I think there's a advanced treatments CPR. AT, you've got two main types. Uh, you've got high explosive, which is for soft targets, groups of infantry, or soft vehicles, uh, and either high penetration or AT, anti-tank. There's a lot of different rockets, so I'll leave that to you guys to play with. But um, oh, there's two other main types in that. You've got single shot, like N laws and stuff like that. M um, one three six in RHS. 
uh, RPG 26, I believe it is. And then you got the reusable ones, which are usually used for dedicated AT guys. So they're the ones who will bring multiple rockets and can reuse them. Talk about Black Blast. Uh, Do you want to talk about Black Blast? Because I you know that's a thing people yeah. mistake a lot. Black Blast. Black Blast. Black Blast. But, oh, no, Shut I can't up. say it. <laughs> RPGs have got backblast, which means that you can get killed, knocked out by standing behind an RPG or firing it while with a ball behind you. So don't do that. Call for your to call backblast clear, um, and that's a question: Is my backblast clear? And then somebody behind him should say yes, or if they're standing right behind him, then no and move. Specialist positions in armoured vehicles, so when you're using armoured vehicles like we were doing in the last ult that went so well um, there's three position uh, wait, save it to the end um, we we'll say you. there's three positions, you've got the commander, the gunner and the driver most senior is the commander, he's in charge and nobody should doing anything unless he's told you he does this by calling who he's talking to driver or gunner and then giving the command so we can tell the gunner to orient a certain direction load a certain type of round, switch to a different weapon, and most importantly orders when and what to fire at. He can tell the driver to orient a certain direction, which is without moving by the way, so if he says orient 234, it means spin to that direction, not move. He sets the speed, so forward very slow when you're sort of inching forward, forward slow, um, forward full, or forward fast using the shift key. Uh, he also tells the driver when to stop, so they should keep going in that direction and speed unless told otherwise. Using common sense, don't drive off a cliff. Also, commanders, feel free to say, follow this road, stop at that tree line. Just keep in mind that the driver's view is limited, and he might not see that road or tree line. House clearance, you've got to be talking about what you're doing at all times. Uh, you don't want to be looking behind you, you want to be looking forward. That point man needs to keep going forward while his team tells him when to move. He can't look behind him to see if everyone's ready, so you've got to tell him, ready, go. Uh, he's waiting for the guy behind him to tell him when to go, and he should be saying where he's moving and when he's going. Uh, if you're going left, then say it. Your team should know, let you know that they understand by the same, they're going right, or they're with you. Um, I want When we're doing this house clearing, I want you to think of it in phases. So each room is a phase, and each doorway is the beginning of a new phase. Sounds like a story. It is, it's like a story. So you don't go into the next room until the one you're in is clear, until the phase you're in is complete. Um, you don't go up a floor till the floor you're on is complete. Speaking of floors, if you go in somewhere and there's stairs, somebody needs to be on those stairs looking up the stairs while the rest of the team clear the house. Because otherwise what you what tends to happen is you'll be clearing the house, somebody comes down the stairs and either reoccupies the room that you thought was, was clear or shoots you in the back. Uh, using grenades and flashbangs is ideal for minimizing risk. Smoke is not so effective because it tends to just um, block your vision as well. Again, if there's civvies in the area, use the flashbangs. Um, if not, use consistent? the grenades and kill them. It's like a child in a car. Alright, so we're going to go through this one nice and slow, if everyone wants to follow me. I'm the point man in this, so Aaron, you're just nominated to be the, my second man. You're going to be clearing it with me. Point man ready? Great. Opening. Going left. Yeah, Got stairs. Nice. Right, so you want to clear this. I've got the stairs. I need another team. So Titan and Aaron, you're going to go clear that ha that room. Come while I stay on the stairs. It's going to be three of us on the wall. We're going to get from there. Point man ready. ready. There's a sentry at the top of the stairs. Going right. Guys, Can shut up. Hey, shut up. Left clip. Like through the window. Yeah, there is. Building clip. Alright, now clear. you two are going to stack up on me and then we can go Watch. to the next floor. I'm still the point man, so. Alan, stacking up with me. 
Let me know when to go. Ready. Ready. Moving. Going left. Got a door on the right. Okay. Going left. Left's clear. So then as we come up these stairs, you see there's a door there. That's also another thing. So uh, the same as the stairs. If I'm going left and somebody opens that door and shoots us both all in the back, then that's bad. So you come up, you see the door, somebody should be on that. Yeah, Aaron, we're on you. Ready. Right, common sense I should. There we go. Room clear. Yep, yeah, that was good. Uh, next thing we're going to be doing is movement in contact. So basically, when you're moving in contact, you want to be going from cover to cover, keeping low and fast. Where possible, you want to cover your movement with smoke or covering fire or cover, hard cover. Uh, bounding advance is ideal for crossing open spaces. Basically, if you've got two teams like you've got here, one team would move up to a position, radio that they were set, and then the second team, which had been cov either covering, providing covering fire or just overwatch, would move up to their position, say set, the first team would then move on from that position. You're not going past them. Uh, the easiest way is if you go up to their position and then the first team just stays on assault. Uh, Going to go through some basic tactics. This is good for your team leaders. Um, for an, an, an on attack, what you, a few things to consider. You want recon if you can get it. The more info you've got, the better. You want to attack the position where it's weakest, not running into uh, MGs and shit. And if you can get Overwatch while you're attacking, then that's the best way. Using that bounding movement, like I just said, is a good way of keeping yourselves covered while you move up. Uh, having one team suppress while the other team assaults seems to work quite well. As long as you've got overlapping fire where you're not shooting into each other, you're shooting at the same target without any chance of hitting your own team. Uh, defense. The defense is my favorite. Um, it's all about holding as long as you can. Um, we like to use utilize an elastic defense. So what you'd have is a line, a forward line set up with all your guys. You hold there as long as you can, and then you fall back and reconsolidate once you've lost a few guys to a second line, and then possibly even a third line. Um, with all of these things, you can. I hope you can see where you can utilize the map markers. So with assault, you've got markers where you, where to go. You've got a marker for your base of fire, which is your suppression team. That's a base from a base of fire, putting fire onto them. You can use these markers to coordinate and stay together. Um, for say you assault in a town, mark all the the, the houses, or mark grids sectors to clear. Uh, in defense, you can mark your outer line. You can set up your MGs are really good in defense. You can set up their positioning so that you know they've got that uh, overlapping fire. <coughs> uh, a good defensive line will funnel the enemy into a kill zone where you can then get overlapping bases of fire and kill them. 